All right, they're starting lineups right here, guys. Uh, we're going to start Jose in the back end here with Marky Breezer. And Saku, your line will start off for us here. Okay, guys, a couple of things here. Ice wasn't the best. We all realize that. So what we got to make sure we do here is don't pass up on shots. Let's get a lot of shots on, the, on this guy early. Let's take advantage of the uh, situation. The other thing is we want to have a good start. Okay, let's, uh, let's make sure that we're ready to go here. It's going to be a unique situation. It's an opportunity for us. Okay, to talk about this for a long time. It's a lot more fun to talk about it when you win a hockey game here. Okay, guys, today, the easy thing to do would be to find excuses. The toughest thing to do will be find a way to win. Let's make the right choice here. Let's go out there and win ourselves a hockey game. All right, let's get her going here. Good hard plays, boys. We'll win the battles. Get the puck in, though. Shoot it too. Yeah. Yeah, shoot it. Well, guys, good job. Yeah. Everything hard. Yeah. yeah, this is the old one. Yeah. Rock and roll, Red. Hey, boys, are we ready? Yeah! Oh, Woo! Let's go! Come on, come on! Okay. Sunshine. Let's go, guys. Good start. Come on, B. Hello, Come on. If you watch NHL hockey for a lot of years, you won't see anything like tonight. Montreal, Edmonton coming up. Let's savor the night. And number 79, Andre Markov. The forward line for Montreal, number 11, Jackson Troyford. Number 20, Richard Zedra. And number 73, Michael Ryder. And now the starting lineup for your infantry. Richard Sednik, Saku Koivu, and St. John's Newfoundland native Michael Ryder up front for the Canadians against Ryan Smith, Fernando Pisani, and Ethan Morrow of the Edmonton Oilers. Light bulb flashing at Commonwealth, and everybody stayed. Nobody left after the Mega Stars game. And here's a breakout pass for Sednik. Up to Koi Vu, a big night for this line earlier in the week in Vancouver. When Zednik scored twice, Koi Vu had three assists, a three-point night as well for Ryder. But they were minus two in the loss against Calgary on Thursday. Well, there is some bite in the air here tonight. Surprised everybody. And the shifts will have to be short. The lungs will be burning. The first shift for Montreal, just over 30 seconds. Have to get everybody on the ice quickly, although it's a little warmer on that bench with the heaters blasting. And the Canadians with the pressure, and Juno gets the first shot. It'll be rolled to the line and does come out, played back in, offside. And as you mentioned, Glenn, I think they're going to have to really keep the shifts short. The guys have some concerns with their hands and their toes. Those were the things that really got cold, which as Canadians, we can remember that. And Craig McTavish, they're both four-line teams. They like to roll their lines over. So that's probably a good thing for these coaches here tonight. Now Alice Hemsky is on the ice. Sean Horkoff returning to the Oilers lineup. He missed their victory over Toronto after Tweaking it back in practice, Ribeiro spins, a shot deflecting high into this near corner. Korkov watches his man, 
And it's on the far side. His pistol can't catch up to it. Canadians applying pressure. Yannick Perot, and now it's centered. And all the way out, and away goes his Bister. The Edmonton native is Bister on the back, and they hold it wide past Theodore. Francis Bouillon unable to clear it. His Bister again. And Theodore makes the save. Centered in front, and that shot just missed the target as the Oilers get early chances in the opening two minutes. You want to get some shots here early. Here's a chance, side of the net. Hemsky doesn't normally like to shoot. In front, Ferguson shot, and that's deflected wide. Horkov, Isbister, Hemsky now applying pressure. Steos moved up, puck behind the net, and now wrapped around to the near side. It will be kept in by Montreal native George Larocque, who returns to the Oilers lineup. Chris, I just said you want to get some shots here early because the goalies aren't warmed up yet. It takes them five or ten minutes to get warm after the break. And if you can get on them early, I just noticed both goalies are a little off here. Hoffman at one end was out of position. Theodore there was out of position as well for a moment. Well, I would have to think they're wondering what they're doing out here. <laughs> it's going to be the toughest job of anybody here tonight. And I'm sure early on, while they're maybe second-guessing their position, it's a good chance to get a quick goal. Why do they always give it to the goalies? I mean, what is it? You can see a little green under Ty Coughlin. That's a long underwear issue of the Edmonton Eskimos to keep him warm and maybe rub a little good luck off here at Commonwealth Stadium. And at the other end, of course, Theodore. And the Montreal Canadiens, they consulted with the Green Bay Packers and are wearing Under Armour. They are, in fact, what the Packers wear. Certainly it's cold in Green Bay, so both clubs dealing with the elements. It's the NFL against the CFL. Here's Darren Langdon into Edmonton territory. Chad Kilger, the former Oiler in front. And the puck bouncing over his stick. LaRock trying to clear it, unable to do so. George LaRock did not play in the first meeting of the year between these two in Montreal. And the Oilers prevailed in that game. Stole. Can't clear. Back in on Conklin. Jason Smith slows things up as both teams continuing the trend of quick changes. Puck flipped out at center, out of the reach of Pesetti. Canadians get it to the red line and send it back in. There's Zednik taken to the boards by Jason Smith. It'll be kept in by the Canadians and now ricocheting out. Ryan Smith looks for it and he'll sweep it down into the Montreal zone and Theodore will play it. Off the glass, pass Moro, and out. For all you fans who like to see fighting, you probably won't tonight, is the players have gloves underneath their hockey gloves. They have to call a timeout to get both sets of gloves off to fight. That kept in by Brewer. Now Pisani looking for it. He'll spin it back. Side of the net. Moro looks for Ryan Smith. Smith behind the goal, trying to twist away from Saku Koivu. Shot bouncing in front. And the Canadians are able to clear. Corey Cross, the native of Lloyd Minster, back to get it. An Alberta boy who's spent many nights on the outdoor ice as play is stopped. There's another Albertan, Bamp native, Ryan Smith. And Ryan Smith, who played a real strong game against the Toronto Maple Leafs the other night, sets up behind the net. That's where 99 used to hone his trade and Ryan Smith does so well, goes right to the front of the net, but gets a stiff cross check by Sheldon Sure. Here's Radek Dvorak after it, the Canadian zone, tried to center it. That was knocked down. Dvorak out with Mike York, who is on a roll for Edmonton, a 16 point streak for number 16. At the line of the roll, like the Brewer gets there ahead of Jan Bullis. Puck at center, Francis Bouillon. A lead feed out of the reach of a teammate. And Cross will go back to take the handoff from Ty Conklin. Radek Dvorak starting to heat up for Edmonton after a slow start. Andre Markov, an outlet pass. Nicholas Sundstrom has moved up in the Canadian scheme of things. As they are without Donald Audette, the separated shoulder, on Thursday night as he collided with Denny Gauthier of the Flames. Oilers with the first three shots of the game. And we are five minutes, 40 seconds in. Now we'll see more hitting. The players are starting to get warmed up and there's contact. 
Markov. Much more of it. Sorry, Chris. Markov, a shot, and it's flagged down by Conklin for the first time he's faced a shot. The Montreal Canadiens, they want to get off to a good start. They don't score the first goal. They've yet to win a game this year, 0-8. So it is critical for them to score that first goal and then settle into their trap, which they're so famous for now with that strong Julian defensive system. From the draw, Markov able to keep it in. And now Stoll, who played on the outdoor ice at St. Paul's School in Yorkton, Saskatchewan. And there would have been many nights even colder than this. Jared Stoll at center for the Oilers. Puck sent in by Ribeiro, and that will trigger another Canadian's change. Hemsky dishes off the puck, and up ice Ferguson. Took a bump, got it deep. And now it's fired around the side. It's Horkoff along the boards. Is Mister working against Sheldon Saray. Here's a chance, Theodore down. And a close call there. Is Mister working with Horkoff at the point. Shot flipped through, and that went wide of the net. Here's Big George Larock. He's knocked down, and away goes the Canadians. Kilger with Langdon and Bejan, and the shot doesn't get through. Kilger looks for it. Now Langdon, he bumps with Steos. Darren Langdon watched by Horkoff on the near side and sent cross crease by Bejan. And it's sent out to center in Larock. At the end of a shift, George will continue on. Vic Larock rolling it in front. And Craig Rive, the lone goal scorer for the Canadians on Thursday night, gets rid of it at center. There's Stoll shoveling it back into Montreal ice. The ice gets worse here. They follow the bouncing puck. And the players are going to have to be very careful in their own zone to make a good, hard, crisp pass. A couple of good hits by Jason Shimera, an Edmonton native on his ship. As the Canadians go down to work in the Oilers zone, it's left for Markov. Moving in, putting it in front. Ribeiro all tied up. And collecting the puck, it's Eric Brewer speeding away. The Vernon BC native. Trying to cut in, and he was held up. Now it's Pisani, rink wide, and Morrow couldn't get a stick on it, and it's fired out to center. Corey Cross with the spatch, the puck right back in, and hit to the pitch. Here's a shot wide by Morrow. They try to center it. Where is it? Theodore looking for it, and it's cleared away, kept in by Mark andre Bergeron. Pisani fighting against the boards. Now Breezebois tied up by Ryan Smith. Smith trying to work it loose. Ethan Morrow's got it. Morrow now cycling it back. Ryan Smith from a bad angle. On the other side, Ferguson's moved up. Product of Camrose, Alberta, and now Koivu is able to get rid of it to center. Bergeron fans on it, and the Canadians are up with it. Poulos rolling it through. Example there, that puck playing tricks on Berger. Now behind the Oiler net, Ryan Smith got to it first, up the boards, and it will come out at center. Vicente, he's knocked down by Andreas Dackel. Theodore couldn't find it behind the net, but the Canadians take over as the Oilers are changing it up, and Rafi Torres is on the ice. Now back comes Montreal. Jason Smith. Feeds it ahead on right wing. Away goes Dvorak. Cruising in. Slowed up on the play by Surrey. Jason Smith pitching in. And now it's past Smith. Covering was Mike York. There's Torres with six goals in his last ten games. Battling along the wall. Torres after it behind the net. Now Jason Smith again moving up. It's centered in front. And now Ribeiro will start back. Mike Ribeiro at center, into the Oilers' zone. His quick shot, up high over the shoulder of Ty Conklin. Now another shot in front, and it's just swept wide as Ribeiro was on the doorstep. Yannick Perot's after it. In behind the net, Sundstrom forechecking. Torres tries to get it out, and it does come to center. Past the midway mark of the opening period, the first ever National Hockey League game outdoors with close to 60,000 in attendance at Commonwealth Stadium in the City of Champions.
Here's Steve Steos, who just signed a new three-year extension here in Edmonton. John Horkoff, he's knocked off the puck. Langdon and Beijing get it back in. And the puck flipped up into a snowbank and out of play. We're still scoreless in Edmonton. Well, I know it's not normally this cold in Tilsonburg on the tobacco farms, Coley, and Mr. Bettman, I know it's never this cold in New York City, and Glenn, you know that. And I don't think Mr. Bettman's ever played outdoor hockey. Not in this <laughs> temperature. But they're dressed for the occasion like 55,000 others here tonight. And the guys are trying to keep warm with the brisk play. And the last duration was five minutes and 12 seconds without a whistle. Puck was played by Markov, wiping out the delayed whistle. Now Pisani works the boards against Breezebois. Koivu looking for a loose puck. It's knocked free by Ryan Smith, but the Canadians will bust out. Too far on the left wing, Brewer spins it back to the line, and now Ethan Morrow played on the lakes just outside Huntsville. Took control. Back in, Zednik unable to catch up with it. Morrow pumps with Markov. And again, another puck into the snowbank on the other side of the pond. One thing that's very noticeable so far in this game, the Edmonton Oilers are going after Montreal in their own zone and working the puck behind the net. Why is that? Well, Montreal, their defense are pretty big, but their third man back to center iceman normally, their centers are small, you know, Koivu, Ribeiro, Bajan, they're all small center icemen, so they think they have the advantage on the low play. So much so that they've taken Yannick Perot and moved him to the left wing, which is an unusual spot for him with Ribeiro at center. You're absolutely right. Cycle game will work against Montreal. Bird's eye view, as you know, sends it cross ice. Poulos missed on the one-timer and a shot in on Conklin. And he will cover up with 8.15 left in the opening period of the Heritage Classic. Anyone who's ever been a goaltender at any level and played in a cold arena, they know that first thing that hurts the most when you get hit with a puck, your feet. And Theodore goes to the bench and he puts his feet right on those big heaters that are behind the bench. Shots are 5-2 in favor of Edmonton. Perot put it in front. Jason Smith, a stick on it. To redirect it out to center. Bouillon on the left side out of the reach of Sundstrom. Played around. Steos had trouble with it. We'll try it again. He's hounded. Canadians up with a puck. A shot on Coughlin. Rebound. Perot beats the point. There's the shot. Kicked out by Coughlin. Ty Conklin in his last 10 games, a save percentage of 935, a goals against average of 1.91. Lead feed out of the reach of York. And trapped by Theodore. The big challenge, I think, for the goaltenders here tonight, first of all, they can't feel the puck because the sticks in their hands are so cold and the, ho the, st the gloves are stiff as can be. And there's going to be rebounds. And if the players will go to the net, I think there'll be a lot of lively pucks in the crease area. You're absolutely right. Conklin, he has been a real great surprise. Lost a heartbreaking game seven last year for Hamilton. Had an 83 save performance in the 2-1-4 overtime win against Houston. One of the best goaltending performances I've seen. And he is amazing in that American Hockey League run. And many of his teammates now with the Oilers who are with him with the Bulldogs say, uh, Tommy who? This is the way he was playing last year. And Tommy Sallow's injury is going to get plenty of time to heal. And the backup for the Oilers is young Steve Valaket. We heard Don Cherry tell us that there wouldn't be many penalties. None yet. 6.51 to go in this first period. In a briskly played first period as Breezebois sends it ahead. Steve Bejan, he'll dump it in. After it is Ryder. Ford checking and it comes to Pesetti and now with speed is picked up by Ryan Smith. Slowed down by Zetnik. Corey Cross will dump it back. Delayed offside is called. Dan Marwelli gets the call tonight to referee the game. He's an Edmonton native. Started refereeing when he was 13 years old here in Edmonton for the Knights of Columbus. And what do the referees do to keep that cold metal object from sticking to their lips? 
Well, they wrapped tape around their whistle. Danny's very first year when he was 13 years old, he got it stuck to his lips. And had to get one of the mothers to come down and peel it off. Just saw, $2 a game back then. Just saw Ron Asseltine and another rebound from earlier today. Asseltine had his whistle freeze, and we do have a penalty coming up as Michael Ryder took a high stick. That has to hurt. Looks like right in the eye, the high stick. Careless use of the stick. It'll be Corey Cross going to the penalty box. And we'll see if we can pick it up. Right here. Boom. So the first power play of the hockey game goes to the Montreal Canadiens. And have they been struggling on that? 11.8%, 28th in the National Hockey League, just 6% on the road. And one goal in their past 17 attempts. So a lack of offense from all parts of the game. Five on five and five on four. And you will see Craig Reve now in front of the net. The big defenseman as they're trying to mix things up and create point shots and traffic in front of the goaltender. That's the positive storyline for the power play. Reve, who is in front, did score a power play goal Thursday night and against Calgary. And it's about puck retrieval, too. They dump the puck in small Montreal forwards. They don't get it back. Reve gives you some size and some strength to get these pucks back to set up a chance to possibly score a goal. And watch big 44 at the point, Sheldon Surrey. He had 11 shots on goal against the Oilers in their first meeting. A couple of goals in that game, and big 44 poised. There he is. He'll flip that off Pacetti to the end boards. In front, Reve at the point. There's a shot that goes wide. Brewer after it, and he backhands it high, lofting it down the ice. First minute of the power play is done. When you just mentioned it, and we just witnessed it, I mean, puck recovery here for the Montreal Canadiens, it's non-existent. Let's see how they do on this run. Now Koivu enters the zone. Here's Zednik trying to center, and it's cleared past the point, down the ice, and Dvorak chasing after it. There's Zednik. Now Koivu. Zach and Koivu hooked down. There'll be another penalty in a half minute remaining in the first. And let's see here, is that just an offside? And uh, Orkoff got away with one, although he's claiming Koivu took the dive. I think he might be right. Let's have a look at it. Koivu's been known to take a bit of a dive once in a while. And Edmonton lined up at the blue line, four across uh, Montreal. Recognizing that they, when they dump it, they don't get it, so they're trying to carry it. That's not seem to work either. Saku Koivu excited that this game being beamed back to his native Finland tonight. As they look in on the first ever National Hockey League game played outdoors. And the first one played in minus 25 temperatures. Sednik and Ryder in deep. Here's Zednik checked by Steos. The penalized player, Corey Cross, is back on the ice, and York has it at center. Cross moving up, and Cross over the line ahead of the play, and it's offside. CBC's Hockey Night in Canada returns in a moment. Everybody stayed the night. They're bundled up. Hot chocolate sales is as high as, as beer sales in the concession stands. Notice you didn't mention hard liquor. I'm sure that's going through the roof here in Alberta. There may be a few wineskins in that crowd tonight. And we're still awaiting the first goal of this game. That's even strength. And play has been stopped. I love what Sheldon Surrey said in the National Post the other day. He said, if it's cold here, put a toque on, and if it snows, grab a shovel. We all live a privileged life in the NHL. And this experience will be unbelievable, and he's absolutely right. Way to go, Sheldon Surrey. And you know, he backed it up when the Olympic break was on a couple of years ago. He went back to 
his hometown, Fishing Lake, Alberta, in northern Alberta, skated with the kids and uh, said it was a great experience. And uh, he was like a kid yesterday, talking about his chance to be here. Uh, what a great story he is as well after missing last year with that wrist problem and coming back and shooting the puck the way he has. And they thought he'd be just, you know, they'd break him in slowly and not have a huge role in this team in training camp. And then all of a sudden, Surrey started to shoot the puck and shoot the puck and started to go in. And lo and behold, he's got some goals and some confidence. And well known in these parts, a former Fort Saskatchewan trader of the Alberta Junior Hockey League. Just over three minutes remaining. In the opening period of the Heritage Classic as it's rolled down into Montreal ice and Rive sends it the length of the ice. Brewer touching it and icing the call. Well, with three minutes to go here in this first period, we should now address what these players are going to do between periods because obviously they're going to have to go and get warm, but they'll probably change their undergarment and underwear and put some nice fresh dry stuff on but it's going to be a challenge to keep loose to come back on this break again to start off the second period and we have put in the dress in coach's corner so they can watch that shot he, him, he, shot. sorry you talk about Sheldon Surrey shot Corey Cross has about a six inch gash in his leg when pucks spin towards the net it's like a saber saw it cuts you I don't think anyone is going to want to block the Sheldon Surrey shot tonight in this cold Flamingo Hockey term for getting out of the way <laughs> quickly. And it might be excusable tonight. Here's Shapiro with a shot. It misses the target. Big LaRock on the far side. There's Shamara in behind the net. Jarrett Stoll is forechecking. And now an outlet pass. Bouillon ahead. Perot couldn't hook up with Sundstrom. And the Canadians will change. Oilers in turn do likewise. Shamara trying to cut in as his mates were on that change. Now feeds the point. Here's a shot, and that's steered off Theodore and out of play. You know, I was just watching the puck, the way it's reacting on the ice, Glenn, and you'll remember this very well also. It'll start to go on edge, and when players shoot the puck from far out, and if it is on edge, it's gonna dip and dive on these goalies. It's not a bad play just to shoot the puck from anywhere in these ice conditions late in periods. Oh, you're absolutely right, Greg. And hey, pucks have to be at the optimal temperature also. Oilers win the faceoff. Steos a shot high. Morrow crashing in there, but the Canadians get it out to center. Steos for Morrow. Back it came to Jason Smith, and he'll dump it in from his own side of center, and that is icing against Edmonton. So as I was mentioning about... Oh. A little extra after as Morrow went crashing into Markov, who got the icing call, and uh, well, they may have to remove two sets of gloves, but it looked like they were interested in doing so. Yeah, it's the other eight guys that came in and said, stop this shenanigans, let's get down, get the whistle, and with two minutes left in this period, get out of here, get into that warm dressing room. But as I was mentioning about the pucks, believe it or not, the National Hockey League has tested pucks, and they believe that the optimal temperature for a puck is 10 degrees, Fahrenheit. Well, guess what? It's colder here tonight. So these pucks, where they keep them in an ice bucket, they might actually have to warm some of these pucks so that they don't bounce as much and they don't break the glass like they have so far this evening. Is there a warm spot here at Commonwealth? <laughs> There's Koivu when the captain works the boards, lost the puck, Saray there. It's chipped by him and now Ryan Smith. Here's an odd man break for the Oilers. Smith is in. Theodore down and made the save. Ryder back helping out, tied upside of the net. Scramble for it as Torres took a whack at it. And the Canadians are away with the puck. And as Ryder dumping it in and getting a change as the Oilers come close. A high risk play over just a couple minutes to go in a period. Sore pitches in without any support. A two on one that almost passed Montreal. Puck club down at center. That's Goulas after it. Stales plays it for his partner. Smith with a collision up against Goulas. We're in the final minute of the first period as Radek Dvorak dumps it out. Rebe nearly overskated it. Now it's brought in. Dvorak unable to get loose. And Juno sends it out. And play has been stopped. 
Let's have a look at that chance. The two-on-one from the Edmonton Oilers and Theodore had to be very sharp on this bouncing puck on the two-on-one. And you're going to see the pinch here. There it is. No puck or no player support behind. And away goes Ryan Smith on the two-on-one. Good play by Kintel to take the man in front and leave Ryan Smith to Theodore. And pretty good back checking to get back as well yeah. by Sheldon Surrey. Well, typically the fastest guy on the ice is the guy who's made the mistake. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? <laughs> that was the case there. By the way, looking at Ryan Smith, the Oilers have had a horrible time on faceoffs, but he was 65% against the Toronto Maple Leafs a couple of nights ago. And he's not really a natural center, and so that's a pretty neat stat for him. Less than a half minute remaining in the first period. Torres and York rolling it into the Montreal zone. Rive fires it around. That's knocked down. Dvorak put it in front. Up Theodore. And Torres a bad angle shot that Theodore handled. And play stopped with just under six seconds remaining. The, the puck Theodore, set on the play. Sorry, Theodore has been the busier goaltender and has made some remarkable saves. Greg McTavish is getting his whisk. Ty Conklin is down at his end. Board stiff and told stiff. Two back-to-back -back good saves, good reflex saves by Theodore. He is in this hockey game. Yeah, I know you watched Theodore stop 40 shots last weekend. He said, that's what I'd like tonight, to stay warm. I'll take 40 shots as he was brilliant against the Ottawa Senators. Greg, Greg, the only reason they won. Well, no real horn here to signify the end of the period. Ryan, a quick thought on the cold. Yeah, it's pretty chilly out here, but uh, this is fun. This is great. This is uh, this is what every kid dreams of, playing out in a pond. Uh, and this is obviously uh, um, up for more uh, for more than uh, just going out on the uh, pond behind your uh, backyard, but this is exciting. The ice holding up pretty good? Yeah, it's all right, actually. Uh, in the first, it was, uh, or in the uh, warm-up, it was, uh, wasn't very good, but uh, uh, I don't know. They seem to adjust it, and it feels pretty good. Did you get inspired watching your heroes play? Oh, no question. Uh, I came down here yesterday morning to watch them practice and uh, obviously watch them from the dressing room there. That's uh, exciting. Uh, there's no question. Having them all back here in the city is uh, great for the city. Ryan, thanks for this. Good luck in the second. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me. You're on White Avenue in the city of champions. And throughout the city, it must be pretty quiet tonight because you're either here at Commonwealth or you're watching at home. And the, the city has done itself proud once again. As the two teams come out for the second period, and uh, both coaches did a good job of getting everybody involved. Uh, no player played less than three minutes in the first period. Well, I think Edmonton, they probably did a little bit better job. Their shift lengths were about 20 seconds less than Montreal's. And so that is the reason for the high, higher tempo in the game for them. But it also could be the fact that they had the puck most of the game, and Montreal couldn't change, particularly since they spent most of the time in their own zone. And again, this first five minutes of play, let's watch and see how the players warm up coming out of the locker room, although it was warm in the locker room, obviously. To come out in this cold right away and to try and get your body moving again will be an interesting challenge. And if I were forwards right now, I'd throw some pucks early here at the goalie, wouldn't you? Yeah, I absolutely would. It's a shock to come from that warm dressing room and then it hits you right in the face as soon as you come out. All the fans on their feet to, trying to keep warm and Ty Conklin and Jose Theodore pitching a shutout so far. And, you know, we should mention that when we got here around noon today, there was a great deal of concern about whether or not this game would take place. And uh, it's uh, terrific that these guys are gritting their teeth through these conditions and giving us a second period in the Heritage Classic because there was some concern that they might start, but we might, might not get too far into the game. Here's a pass for Ryan Smith in front to Theodore. Called upon to make an early save here in the second period. Smith, Pisani, and Moro buzzing in the Montreal zone, and now the Canadians get control. And Koivu leads them up to center. Markov fires it in. Off target. Swept around by Ryder. Koivu for Zetnik, and he whips the shot wide. 
At the point, it'll be kept in, deflected, scores! Richard Sednick on the doorstep, and he is starting to heat up for Montreal, and Sednick scores the first outdoor goal in NHL history. And it is his fifth goal of this early season. Well, there's the early goal here that we talked about, the shot that's a very lively board here. The players told me yesterday that if you hit the puck on the yellow area of the boards, it just takes off. Well, it took off right to the point, and a smart shot through traffic that was redirected in Great front. Great play by Ryder there, and, no question. And then lands right on the stick. One goal in his first 13 games. Zedek again, a pair. Look out, Jose Theodore lost his footing, and he'll sit on the puck behind the Montreal net. Great play by Ryder on that last goal. Nice little tip. It was a healthy scratch by Julian, and he came back with a three-point performance. You don't want to do that too often, or you'll find yourself out of the lineup more often. And there's a look at Theodore. I think losing an edge perhaps in a rut. Let's have this look one more time at the goal. There's a tip you just mentioned, Glenn, and then right onto the stick of Zednik. Almost looked like a pass tip, if you will. Passing it through the traffic over to Zednik. I don't know if it was lucky or if it was intentional, but it looked pretty good. Yeah, I think he probably had some intent. There's no question about that. Jason Smith just a half a step behind. And there, Zednik in front. and there is the rut that Theodore just fell on going behind the net. I talked to the goalies about their skates and the ice because when it's very cold, if you're a goalie, sometimes it's hard to get a grip on the ice and most goalies like to get some feel underneath their skates. Both of these two guys use extremely sharp skates anyway, so that wasn't an issue for them and most goalies in the league today use sharp skates. I was really surprised. I talked to Pierre Gervais, the trainer for Montreal, I would have thought with the ice conditions here, the ice being so much harder, that players would have gone with less hollow. Because it is so uh, so fast, the ice, that a lot of times you'll take less hollow, but in fact said it was the opposite. They've gone exactly the way they would with the depth of their skates as Northlands Coliseum. So as much as the ice conditions are different, and we see that they are, the players haven't changed the hollow with their skates. But they do have skate sharpening machines that are right behind the benches, and they brought them out in case the players lose an edge in a hurry so they can sharpen them in a hurry. Because if you look around this venue, there's a lot of sand and a long way for the players to go out into the ice, so they could almost lose an edge just getting to the rink. So that was one of the thought processes there as we look at the heaters that certainly are keeping the players warm. And I've also heard that the Canadians have chicken noodle soup on the bench to keep them warm. Well, Matt Sandin will be happy to know that. <laughs> Ty Conklin was over the bench to keep warm as uh, Dan just, Craig did a nice job on the ice. Sorry, Chris, he just changed his gloves when he went over. So that's a new twist as well. Richard said next goal at the 39 second mark. Breeze Watt and Ryder draw assists on the play. Now Kintel has his man wrapped up, Dvorak up with a loose puck, York's in front, Torres centers, Dvorak unable to get a shot away. And speeding down the ice, Jan Bullis into the Oilers zone. Along with Dackel and Juno, Oilers work it to center, played back in, and that's offside. You mentioned Ty Conklin changing, changing his gloves. Most players will go through two and three sets of gloves in a hockey game. And they will use glove dryers to dry them as the players sweat. I think the glove dryers today will be used to get the icicles off the gloves. Wait till right. Those goaltenders came in after practice yesterday and they were just completely iced up on the front of them like an ice shield after uh, an hour workout. Outdoors. Is Bister trying to keep it in? Well, Mark Andre Bergeron plays it around to the other side. And now the Canadians have him the Oilers in their own zone. Is Bister working against Mike Ribeiro and the Canadians doing a good job of bottling up the Oilers after taking the one goal lead two minutes into the second period. Marc-Andre Bergeron who had a couple of bus loads of fans go to the game at the Bell Center in October to watch his first game ever as an NHLer in Montreal. 
Greg Rive up at center ice. Stocked up there, and the Canadians will turn back, and Rive takes a look. Both teams making changes. Now Bejan can't get loose, but moving in is Langdon. Aaron Langdon to the corner with Steve Steos. Langdon, the former Vancouver Canuck, and an old teammate of Len Healy's. Scored his very first National Hockey League goal against the Montreal Canadiens and Patrick Waugh in the Montreal Forum. Here's Chimera speeding in, trying to get a shot away. And Theodore stopped that. It'll be kept in at the right point. Breeze Waugh. He's bodied by LaRock. Puck loose. LaRock moving in. Turned back by Markov. Oilers trying to set something up in front. Chimera puts it to the front of the net. Now Stoll's got it. In behind the rock. Watched by Brisebois. Big George trying to fend off the Canadiens defenseman. Now Stoll playing it back in deep. Bounced over the stick to Chimera. Jason Chimera and Brisebois work the boards. Here's the rock. His shot deflecting high off the glass. And now the Canadians will get it out and bounce it down the ice. Coughlin's got to come out to play it as Kilger, the former Oiler, was first man in. Ryan Smith dumps it into Montreal territory. Played around to the line, kept in by Cross. Here's Ethan Moore on the left wing. Sheldon Surrey up the boards. Morrow trying to keep it alive for the Oilers. Smith couldn't get the shot away, and Morrow fired it wide. Now the Canadians play it out. It's Ryder who set up the long goal. Dumping it in deep, and quickly, the Oilers dispatch it back down. Remember, with the coaches wanting to have short shifts, it becomes a bigger issue in the second period because the changes are longer. And maybe, just maybe, a team will get caught in a bad change here before the second period is over as we look at Chimera driving the net, taking the puck to the net, protecting the puck with his body, and almost getting a shot on goal. Theodore closed him down. Adam Oates is going to love playing center for some of these wingers because real speed is puck movement, and all he has to do is put it up to the wing, and away these guys go. It's going to be exciting for Adam Oates. I'm sure he wasn't excited to have his first practice outdoors in minus 35, though. Ryan Smith kneeled along the boards. A heavy hit there by Bouillon. Oilers continue. And in behind the net. Pisani trying to center it. Puck shot wide of the goal with heavy traffic in front of Theodore. And now Ryder out at center past Koivu. It'll be sent back in by Smith. And he'll head to the bench on a change. Approaching the five minute mark of the second period. Outdoors in Edmonton, where the Canadians have a 1-0 lead on a goal by Zednik. Puck sent ahead, and the Canadians trying to break through. Poivu rubbed out against the boards. Torres was there for Edmonton, and now Ferguson steps up over the line, firing it right on Jose Theodore, and no rebound provided. That was an interesting trap we just witnessed because it was spread out, and not only was it spread out, it was almost man on man out high. And we'll just wait now. The Oilers are on a change here, but if you look to the right of your screen, you'll see the man on man right with the defenseman. Here come, very patient. Stop it there, look. And there's a good read by the Oilers defenseman, and Koivu was almost gone as the Canadians two on one the D man up high. Now at center. That's somehow times how you break that trap. You have to two-on-one somebody somewhere all over the ice. And Edmonton really don't want to trap. Here's a shot fired high. Dackel out with Foolish. And Joey Juno. Marc-Andre Bergeron takes a look. Spun with the puck, got it up the boards, but not out. As the Canadians now go to work with possession. Shot blocked by York. Mike York now chips it ahead. He tries to give chase, was tucked at, and that gave Brisebois time to get possession. And now play called on the hand pass. You're watching Hockey Night in Canada on CBC Sports. They have a little weather gauge at center ice here, and it's not the snowbirds. 
And well, Wingate nearly stopped, but as you can see, minus 28 with the wind chill. And a little earlier, you guys talked about Ty Coughlin changing gloves. Steve Balaket keeping them warm on the boiler bench. He's just glad that when he changes the glove, he's not in it. <laughs> he doesn't want to play <laughs> tonight. Hockey probably would. This is hockey history. Well, maybe not now. <laughs> Slides down and Coughlin comes out to play it. Up the boards where Nicholas Sundstrom kicked it loose. Now centers it out of the reach of Yannick Perot and Jason Chimera starts back. On the right side it goes. LaRock chips it deep. Chimera after it. Kintel bodies him. Saray in support. And Stefan Kintel who said he was out on an outdoor rink in Utrecht last winter with his nephews. Loves to play outdoors, made the play to get it out. Now Ribeiro holds. Canadians setting up. Sundstrom behind the net. And a Caron centers. And Chimera takes a look and starts back. Jason Chimera into Montreal ice. Still after it. Deep behind the goal. Alice Hemsky. Control it, kept in at the point. Hemsky after it again. And it's played out by Kilger. Kate just joined this. The goalies have had trouble with the gloves stiffening up. Here's York. Six-game point streak. Sends it to the net. Doesn't get through. Centered in front. Theodore with a paddle stop on that shot. And Brewer holds the line momentarily. Canadians get it out. There's York twisting and turning. Montreal all up with it. And Rive missed it. Here's Ismister in. The shot just went wide. As Ismister had a chance for the Oilers to tie it. Theodore's got his A game going again this season. He's been terrific so far in this game. His positioning has been A1. Second great Saturday night performance. 38 stops last week as he stole one against the Senators. Andre Markov in his own zone. Back to his partner, Brisebois. Pushed ahead by Juno, kept in. And now Markov, four check by Ryan Smith. Smith working hard, Brisebois up with it. There's Sednik, nice touch pass. Koivu ahead, Michael Ryder working against Steos. Cross ice pass. And it's played in behind the Oiler goal. Ryder and Jason Smith after it. Here's Zednik, the goal scorer, handing it off to Breezeblock. Koivu centers it. And Smith up with it. And he'll play it out to center. And again, with that long change, a little longer shift here for both teams. But the change has been made. Back in comes Bullis. John Bullis in front, and that's cut off. All right, Smith still is out, and he's going to take a penalty, and the long shift may have cost the Oilers a shorthanded situation. That's why he's in the penalty box. If you get out too long in a shift, you get tired, you don't move your feet, and the end result is this. Ryan Smith, a little too aggressive with his stick. Actually gets caught underneath Bullis' visor. Pulls him right down. As a result, Montreal will get another crack at a power play chance. Only one goal in their past 18 kicks to the can. And no shots in their only power play opportunity in the first period here this evening. The only saving grace would be drought may end against a dreadful penalty killing team like Edmonton. Oilers in Chicago have surrendered the most shorthanded goals this year, 21. And Dvorak just blocked the shot and it smarted. He went right off to the player's bench. He is in some pain at the moment. Sheldon Surrey leads the Canadians' power play in. That's Rubiro. Unable to beat Corey Cross. Now he goes to the net. Coughlin down. And he'll cover up. And when you're this cold, as the players are, this has been the concern. You block a shot here, it's gonna hurt. And if you get it in the wrong spot, it's really gonna hurt. Here's the last quality scoring chance here as 
Ribeiro, who is the hottest player in the Canadians right now, six points in six games, he goes to the net. And you can see the how cold Conklin is. He had no idea where that puck was. Really good snow angel though to recover. Looks a lot like you and I in the net. Mr. Millen, on a good day. Yes, we'll be the judge of that. <laughs> oh, I know you will. Canadians having trouble gaining access to the Oilers zone as we approach one minute of power play time left. Chopped in by Perot. Who stays out with Ribeiro and Rive. Mike Ribeiro leading the Canadians in scoring with 13 points. Now they'll set it up. In behind the net, a centering pass. Back to Breezewa, shot. Heavy traffic in front, they score! A power play goal, and it's 2-0 Montreal. Drought had best come to an end, and it came to an end against a team that not kill penalties very well. Some players trying to play goal, trying to block shots, and it is just a simple shot at the net. Your power play is struggling, simplify it. And Rive with a power play goal against the Calgary Flames. Is right in front, he doesn't get this one, but he does a lot of work in front. There's no question about that, the point shot. And Steos got just nailed on the initial shot, and that has to smart too. You see the three white sweaters around there, they're all in good spot. The problem is they didn't take a body, they're searching for the puck. That's Conklin's job. Yannick Perot gets the goal, his sixth of the year, and that's his fourth on the power play. Montreal leads by two. Welcome back to Commonwealth Stadium. I'm with the newest member of the Oilers, Adam Oates. Uh, Adam, uh, tough night to be standing here and watching your teammates. Would you like to be playing? I'd like to be playing, but uh, you know, obviously, I didn't want to force it and get out there and get hurt. And uh, you know, it's a lot warmer for them than it than it is for us right here. How long before you're in the Oilers lineup? Well, hopefully as soon as possible. You know, I'm trying to catch up, skating as much as possible, working out hard. Uh, they're putting me through the paces pretty good, but you know, you can't rush it. Uh, there's a lot of games left, and I, I don't want to come back too soon and get hurt and you know pull a groin and set myself back. Adam, looking forward to seeing you in an Edmonton Uni. Thank you. Me too. Guys, sixth all time in NHL assists, Adam Oates. Yes, but also the Oilers are a very poor face-off team. Most of center icemen are under 50 percent. His career face-off stat, 58 percent. And that will certainly help their cause, the reason or the lineup. The only one better than him would be the guy who scored the goal, Yannick Perot, who's led the league the past four years, well over 60 percent. 10.53, the time of Perot's goal. Breezewap and Rive the assist and for Patrice Breezewap. A pair of helpers in this second period to stake the Canadians to a 2-0 lead. And when we talked to Claude Julien yesterday, he was uh, quite impressed with the play of Breezeblad this season. Now Corey Cross rolling it in. Pisani after it. And we've got a penalty being assessed against Montreal, their first of the night. You mentioned Patrice Breezeblad, and it's a... Quite a story. Bob Gainey came out publicly, of course, and stuck up for him, said the booing was ridiculous. I talked to Patrice about it yesterday, and he said, I felt like a piano was just taken off my back. Last season, I was so nervous. I was looking at the puck all the time, not moving my feet. Now I'm much better, and I'm moving my feet, and I feel much more confident. And now a power play here for the Edmonton Oilers. Chad Kilger, a hooking call, and right from the faceoff, a shot handled by Theodore. Those fans in Montreal can be vicious. A goaltender that played there once. He found his way out of town in a hurry, and Patrick Waugh was his name, so they are a critical fan. Marc Andre Bergeron is at the point on this Oiler power play. You see their ranking for the season. Bergeron with a goal and an assist, and first star status Thursday night in the win against Toronto. And the Oilers' four game win streak is on the line here, outdoors at Commonwealth. As they've fallen behind two to nothing. It'll be kept in at the line by York. Ryan Smith is out there on this power play, but Dackel will send them back. Power play was good against Toronto. Bergeron scored a goal in the first period, and the game winner was on a power play also with a Hemsky goal. So it was a big factor in Toronto. Oilers have clicked on three of their last ten power plays. Smith battles in the corner with Sheldon Surrey. It comes around to the near side. Hemsky after it. 
Now it's Hemsky as it bounces away, and it's chopped down the ice by the Canadians. The Oilers 13.3%, 22nd in the National Hockey League on their power play. However, at home, they're 12th, about 19%. So they've been okay at home, just terrible on the road on the power play. Big Eric Brewer gets it in deep. A strange hop came in front to the line where it's fired back in. Chimera looking to set things up from behind the net. Swept to the line, of bounce off the stanchion, and then Beijing gets it to center. Under a half minute remaining in this first Edmondson power play of the night as they try to find a way to beat Jose Theodore. Brewer steps up. And a weak shot inside of the net. Stoll looking for the loose puck. Brewer's got it. He'll cycle it back. Chimera. Saray draped on Jason Chimera. Trying to get it to Stoll. Saray in the middle of it. Back to the point. Penalty. About to expire in front, Brewer, Theodore the save, pick it up! And the Oilers, as the penalty expires, are on the board. Brewer hangs around the front of the net here. He should be back at the point. His mister covers up for him, but he sticks around there for 20, 25 seconds. Normally, if there's no play, you get back to the point. He decides to give Montreal a dose of their own medicine by putting a big man in front. Chimera gets credit with the goal. He may have tapped it just as it was going in. It looked like it was gonna go in anyway. Yes, Brewer took the shot, and Chimera went to the net and he caused some havoc. May have got his stick on it and helped create the goal for the Oilers to draw within one. And now back to work. Torres and a glove stop on a shot that looked like it was going to hit the side of the net by Theodore. Montreal Canadian coach Claude Julien had a meeting with the penalty killers before the Calgary game and he was concerned about the low play in front from his defense. They did a good job in Calgary, killed all four penalties, but low play hurts the defense here as they lose two battles and don't win the chase to the puck. With the exception of Suri, that's a pretty soft group of defense and a friendly place to go to in front of the net. You're not going to get knocked down by some of their defense and they're not very physical. They've had a few looks at that goal and it's tell they have not changed it but we think Eric Brewer will eventually get credit and if he does it will be his first of the season first in 23 games he hasn't scored since last February 23rd of February to be exact if he does get credit for the goal and it's very difficult to tell here Glenn there's the Brewer shot and you can tell his positioning too he's far too back off that one post and not covering the men in front now Ethan Morrow starts out on the left side for the Oilers into the Montreal zone. He'll send it deep, get it back again. Bad angle shot. Ryan Smith's on it. Bouillon works him over. Pisani with the puck, trying to center it. He's knocked down and Koivu's away. Saku Koivu looks up ice and instead will fire it in wide of Ty Conklin. Conklin's been fighting the puck a little bit here tonight so far at times. And We'll keep an eye on him throughout the rest of this period. Breezebois fires it wide of the target. Under five minutes left here in the second period. Love down Sundstrom. Rapiro fires and it's steered away by Conklin. Rapiro has the puck again. Bad angle shot. Pretty clear, Canadians are trying to get pucks on Ty Conklin. Well, Conklin, you saw that save that almost hit him in the knee. He's been hitting the knee twice in the last week, and he did mention to us, Glenn, that perhaps the pads are a little smaller because of that new pad rule. And he'd like to have them higher, but he can't. Well, the one you're talking about was against Toronto, and Thomas Caverly shot from his own blue line. You often wonder why you have to go down to stop those, but he did, and it, you're right, it hit him right on the kneecap. He got Nick twice in that game, and he did admit that the one from outside yeah. center ice probably shouldn't have hit his knee. But it's the cheaters that are missing, and that's where the protection says isn't there anymore for him. Torres streaking in with Dvorak, a centering pass. 
intended for York broken up, but now the Canadians work it back. And it's sent back in weakly on Conklin, but the Canadians continue to put pucks on the net as they lead by a goal. ever cheat like this, Glenn. I mean, we call them cheaters now. I mean, I guess we just weren't that smart. Well, I did enough cheating in my day and got caught, too, so. Four minutes remaining in the second period of the Heritage Classic. The hometown Oilers trail by a goal, a whistle that some of the players didn't hear. Record crowd tonight to watch a National Hockey League game. Well, they had the biggest crowd ever to watch a hockey game is Lansing, but in the National Hockey League, this is the biggest. That was called the Cold War, but they should have saved the name for tonight. 1917, the National Hockey League played their first game in December. That was the Montreal Wanderers against the Toronto Arenas in front of 700 people. Montreal Arena, have we come a long way, baby. What a night, and what a week it's been. Here in Edmonton, Beijing trying to come out in front. Chimera's got it. Jason Chimera spent some time on the outdoor rinks, I think. He's been flying, and he whips a shot right on Theodore. And Chimera would like to have that chance back. Four shots on Theodore in this game, as tabulated by our crack stats man, David Moyer. Jose Theodore, after an off-season last year, went to the gym this summer and really got himself back in shape. And I'm watching his game tonight, and he's just so confident again. His lateral movement is terrific. He's out. He looks great. Just great. Here's Hemsky. He'll take a shot. And that can be a headline story here. His goal against Toronto the other night, his first shot in eight games. I asked him about it. He said, look, I've always been a playmaker since I've been six years old. I'm just not a shooter. I guess you're not, kid. Now what happens if you put Hemsky with Oates? Does that mean he has to shoot or that the Oilers won't get any shots? I don't think anybody's going to tell Adam Oates to shoot more. And you know, the thing about Adam Oates, he's got a great shot. There's Steos. He tests Theodore, and Bouillon wants to clear the traffic as Horkoff was parked in front. Total change in strategy for Montreal this year with Julian. He's gone with two offensive lines led by Ribeiro and Koibu and two defensive lines. And his whole game plan is to keep the quality chances below 12 or 13 and then rest on the shoulders of Jose Theodore and recognize that that is your best chance to win. They've done it. No, they just can't score. Yeah, That's why they're losing games. They've gone a little bit too far on the other, the dark side. Not taking enough chances, a little bit too conservative. Coming into tonight's game, the Canadians with only 20 goals in their last 13. And four of those came in an overtime loss to Vancouver. Only Pittsburgh and Eastern Conference has scored less goals than the Montreal Canadiens. Without Mario Lemieux, of course. That helps. It doesn't help. Bull is chopping at it, and the Canadians are able to clear it, but it rolls the length of the ice. And Cross back to get the icing call, 234 remaining in this second period. Now you think about Montreal's eight wins, four of them, they've, had to get a they've gotten a shutout to get them. And of those eight wins, all Theodore and Garon have given up with five goals. That's a pretty good goals against average. That gives your team a chance to win if you keep it to a, about a half a goal a game. And to get a shutout, you're guaranteed a point. Puck dropped unfairly. They'll do it again. Montreal, they have five players that have as many goals as Greg, Chris, and I. Zero. One who's on the ice there, Nicholas Sundstrom, who they have to get going. Been in the doghouse, but now they've elevated him to Rivero's line, and they hope to infuse a little confidence into him. Moreau's been in that doghouse, too. You can't trade him. He's got a no-trade clause. Well, again, a bird's-eye view. Well, this extraordinary scene at Commonwealth is Bister spinning the bad angle shot on, and Theodore will cover up. 
And I wanted to ask you about Yannick Parole because he has led the league in face-offs in the last four years. I know you played with him. And what is it that makes him such a tremendous face-off man? Because he is absolutely remarkable at the face-off time. Well, he would tell you it is the strength on the stick and just experience. He gets right down low and he's got quick hands. He's had trouble this year. The referees have had to drop the puck. League mandated a little bit higher. And because he gets so low on those face-offs, he's had trouble with his eye-hand coordination, keeping his eye on the puck. And of course, pucks bounce also. So it hasn't been a magical year this year for him in the draw, but past four seasons it has. Ribeiro lost the puck, and now the Oilers break out. His mister was loose on the left side, and the pass broken up. And that put the play offside. With 153 remaining, North Bay's Craig Rive thwarting that attack by the Oilers. Montreal Canadiens might just trade a defenseman here before this is over. That's the one area that they might be able to do to create a little more grit and size up front. That's something that Bob Ganey wants to change with this hockey club. Now they really need to take a look at the Edmonton model. It's spectacular. Nine players tonight have played parts or all of last season at Hamilton. And that's a, a great testament to your scouting and your development of players. They're good enough, they've developed, and you say bye-bye to guys like Todd Marchant because you can. A lot cheaper, too. Ryder whips the shot in, the rebound to the line, but not out. Stales couldn't get it out, now clubbed by Coughlin. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean, you're in a market where you have to watch your dollars, and if you can develop kids, you don't have to pay them like you would have Todd Marchant. And it's worked out fine, as you mentioned. Other than the face-off problems, they haven't missed Todd all that much. Well, the penalty killing, too, a bit, but... It hasn't been a huge hole, and many thought it might be. We well, develop players, and when they're ready, you give them the spots. You don't hand them to them when they're not ready. Certainly, these guys are sure that they are ready. Garrett Stoll just won that face off as he pulled it away from Koivu, rolling down on Theodore. Nice hit man pass, but Koivu lost it as Beat the Morrow stepped in and took the puck away. Oilers pressing for the equalizer, and Ryan Smith's high shot off Theodore. Final minute, second period here at Commonwealth Stadium, where the Canadians have a pair of second period markers. The Oilers have answered with one that has been credited to Shimera that might be changed to Eric Brewer. Now Breezeblatt takes his man to the inboards. Centered in front, Jason Smith with a strong play coming out to jam that puck, but Theodore covers up. Theodore does an excellent job, as most goalies do today, at getting that paddle down and covering the low part of the net. Talked about the cycle game. Greg mentioned how weak defensively Montreal tends to be in front of their net. You see four red sweaters there. Yeah, they certainly do collapse, but the chance is still there. Theodore in this cold weather finds the puck. Covers it up and we'll have another face-off. It is right. From the draw. Jared Stoll trying to work it loose. His bister was in there, but the Canadians up with it. See if they can get it out. And Langdon is able to. And we get a call on a two-line pass. We technically show you the paddle down a little bit, Glenn, because it's amazing how all these goaltenders, and it seemed to start in Quebec. And stop it here, guys. Well, this pad will eventually go down first, and then the other one will follow. Let it roll on the one knee there, and there's the paddle down. And that other leg is up in case Theodore has to push across to the other side of the net. That's how technical they become. Seconds ticking off in this second period. And the puck rolling back into the Oilers zone. And that will do it for period number two. Welcome back to Commonwealth Stadium as we get set for the third period of the Heritage Classic. And an overview of the stadium, 57,000 jammed here, and uh, you're, hope you're enjoying this, whether it be on HDTV or not tonight. You know what amazes me? That there are, most of the people are still here. <laughs> Many thought that they'd last maybe a 
period or a period and a half because of this extreme cold. But you look around, and yes, there are some empty seats now, but there's still a heck of a crowd in this building. I'll well, give them time. They might just be in the concourse yes. warming up. But uh, we're in the heartland of hockey, and the Hardy have been out here today all day. This has been a long, uh, long day for people here in the outdoors. And they're sticking with it. You saw Eric Brewer, and as we suspected, they have given Brewer credit with the Oiler goal. And so Brewer has his first of the year. And it's a 2-1 game as we begin the third period. George LaRock is out to start the third. Jason Smith plays it in deep. Ryan Smith tried to knock it off the ledge. So Craig McTavish with a different combination to try and get the Oilers an early jump here in the third period. Puck played in deep, and there's Smith swooping after it, centering it. Theodore, they jammed the net, and somehow it stayed out. Close call there. And Richard Zednik out at center ice. The play offside, and the Oilers came close to the opening minute. You want to score goals in the National Hockey League, get to the front of the net. There, Breezebois doesn't do a very good job in picking up his man, Ethan Moreau, in front of the net. Theodore has to make a tremendous save. Rick Simpson's been really helping Ethan Morrow the last couple of weeks in terms of his goal scoring, and it's helped. And one of the things he said to him is, shoot just over the pad in the mid-range. He said he's never heard that before, and he's working on it now with all the butterfly goaltenders around. A very good point. Craig Simpson, the last Oiler to score over 50. Here's Brewer putting it at the net, but knocked down. And the Canadians will start back, dumped in, and Bullis will Get in there on the four check, swept around by Conklin, and he just got back in the nick of time as Andreas Dackel took a shot off those far boards. Interesting to hear what Kevin Lowe said about the Oilers and with this ice perhaps not helping their puck movement game. Well, this is where they have to catch in then, early in the period before the ice gets rough. Surrey steps up and nearly got a loose puck in front of the net to the goal scorer for Edmonton. Eric Brewer outlets for York. He stood up right at the line as Bullis was waiting for him. They jam along the boards and it's played back in deep. Sundstrom after the puck, chips it back to the point. Rive unable to keep it in. That's offside against Montreal. A lot of love in this building tonight with all these fans, 57,000. Here's a little bit of love that the two teams are expressing towards each other. Notice the numbers on the back of some of these players. An unlikely cast of characters that playing a very physical game as the points are critical. Yes, it's a great event, but two points, two points. Who said there wouldn't be hitting here tonight? There's lots of it. Just deny it. OJ got off, I can deny it. Was it you? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hear that. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> Torres behind the net trying to Work for it. I don't think you said it on air, Glenn. You're getting yourself here. <laughs> now, Ribeiro stepping up on the play with Bouillon. He'll peel back. He'll be kept in, and a fluttering backhand goes wide off the stick of Rive. Ribeiro in front of the net. They try to score. What a play by Yannick Perot. He had Ribeiro in front, but Perot has the goal, and it's 3 1 Montreal. This line has been dynamite for the Montreal Canadiens. Perot playing the left wing. Who would have thought of that? Good puck recovery by Montreal. Let's look at the paddle down. Remember the one in the second period we did see? A pretty good paddle down, but he's got to push out towards the puck once Perot gets more room out front. And Perot just tucks it in past the stick, and that's a pretty good goal, and not much Conklin could do. And Yannick Perot has a real high lie in his stick, so it enables him to do that. He can stick handle basically with the puck right in his feet. You see the number on the top of the stick there, number six, just underneath the pink tape? He's a very superstitious guy. He goes with different numbers on, the, on his sticks and really believes that based on that number, that will be his success. Tonight it's numero six. Ooh. He scored numero six earlier, but that's numero set for... That stuff going on, he should have been a goal. I'll tell you how, how spooked up this guy is. He was wearing a pair of Bauer skates this year, brand new Bauer skates. They've got great support, everyone's seen them. Not having a good year, gets sat out a couple times. He goes back to a pair of skates, 
Dow skates. They don't even have a company anymore that he had in his basement for four years. He wore when I played with him. My favorite guy for that was Gordy Roberts, the old player. One night I looked at him at the face-off circle. Now he's one of my defensemen. He's got a Bauer on one foot and a CCM on the other. I yeah. couldn't believe it. Well, he starts wearing a pad on one leg. You know it's time to go. Yannick Perot, 222, time of his second of the game, seventh of the year. Talk about equipment. The Oilers, they were gonna they were gonna use the retro style gloves, the colored gloves that would match their uniform. They ordered them in September, and as of Wednesday, they didn't come in. The old timers did wear them in the morning, but the Oilers didn't get them quick enough to break them in. That would have been a real classy look tonight. A real look from the 80s. One look from the 80s we did see was Messier and Gretzky with the high cuffs right up to the elbows. You don't see that anymore very often from players, but Gretz was out there making sure he was protected up high in the forearm. I always thought the playmakers liked the short cuffs to make the plays, but it, it never bothered number 99, did it? Couldn't catch him, Chris. That was the problem, and Mark had to wear the high cuff because he had committed so many atrocities <laughs> against other players. He knew there was retribution coming. Brewer sending it out to center ice. Oilers need to get something back in a hurry now as they find themselves down by two again. Craig Reve and Nicholas Sundstrom assisted on the goal five per row. So Reve has a pair of assists in the game, as does Patrice Brisebois. That's been a good night offensively for the defenseman. And Eric Brewer has the lone goal for Edmonton. Moves it ahead at center, and now Bouillon for the Canadians turns it right back in to Edmonton Ice. There's a hit by Langdon at center. Bejan looks for it, but the Oilers bust away. Speeding in is Dvorak. Dvorak is stopped by Theodore. Now Ferguson up on the play. He tried to center it, and it's sent to center. York was covering for his defenseman. Bergeron to Dvorak again. At the line is Mr. Check. Bejan there for the Canadians. Up ahead it goes. Sundstrom can't get in deep, and York turns back. Here is a play for Dvorak, and that pass hit escape. Jason Smith moves up. A backhand right on. Rebound! And that's off Theodore. They try to center again. Dvorak a whack at it, and Brisebois got his stick on the puck. Canadians clear. Jason Smith, the Oilers' captain. Got away from a Canadian's tug, got it in deep. First man after it is Torres, now York. And Jason Smith up on the play again, so the Oilers activating their defenseman, looking for their second goal. Torres tried that play off the back of the net to no avail. Kept in by Steos. Torres, Torres with a shot that deflects into the corner. And more desperation here in the Edmonton game at the moment. Here's Steos, he's checked. Canadians can't get it out. Now York after it in the corner. Mike York in deep, watched by Perot. Nipsky in support, it comes out to Markov, and he'll just get rid of it. Rolling it down the ice. Brewer back, icing the call. Jose, 38 saves last Saturday against Ottawa, 30 tonight so far. As we pass the six minute mark of the third period. 25th anniversary of the Edmonton Oilers this season, the 25th anniversary of Commonwealth Stadium. And what a celebration we have had here tonight. And yet the Oilers uh, would like to write the happy ending. The Montreal Canadiens are poised to end a four game losing streak on Edmonton Ice. There is talk that we may see more of these games from Canadian teams across the country. A puck put into the slot, and Montreal jumps on it and gets it out of harm's way. Eric Brewer has to go back to retrieve it. Now Brewer trying to start the Oilers away. Edmonton moving into Montreal territory and a shot sailing high as George LaRock 
took a whack at him. Uh, George is known for his big shot, but the release, I don't know. Uh, all 57,000 in the crowd knew that was coming. You talked about other games outdoors. Let's do a little Wayne's World, do a little dreaming here. Rideau Canal would be nice to have a game. How about a game in Toronto, possibly? Their brass is here. And the alumni game. How about enticing Davey Keon back? Or how about Central Park in New York, Ranger Islanders? Is there any Hartford Whalers spots we could go to, Greg Millen? I don't think so. Not a one. Well, this is the first at the NHL level. And it may not be the last. Here, a potential break in. Mark Andre Bergeron scrambling back, trying to slow up Rivero. And finally, the Oilers get the puck back. And Hipsky starts away with York. York has that point streak on the line in front. And play has been stopped as the Oilers put it in the net. No goal. No goal. As Dan Marowelli had whistled play dead. Wow. And I'm not sure why. Uh, I, I kind of like the call. Theodore gets bumped into. Have a listen to this. Well, is he going to call a penalty? Yes, he is. To make an active measure to get out of the way of Theodore, particularly in these elements. Craig McTavish agrees. Don't you, don't you agree? <laughs> there is no goal. Contact with the goaltender is announced. And the faceoff comes outside. It's a good rule. There it is. Cautious call. Ah, you're thinking like a goalie again. But I like it. So no goal, but no penalty either. Nope. That's great on that particular play. You don't see that call very often, but it is around. And that's where an experienced referee like Marwell uses some common sense there. Doesn't put a team down shorthanded, doesn't allow a goal that possibly shouldn't count because Theodore was bowled over. No blood, face off outside. Common sense call. The Indians fire it cross ice into the Edmonton zone. Jason Smith gets back with Richard Sednick in pursuit. And Jason Smith just ran into Michael Ryder, slowing up his progress. Dvorak couldn't find it on the near boards, and it will go all the way down the ice. Both teams changing. As it swooped down into the Oilers zone. After Juno, played ahead by Corey Cross. Now Cross over to Parker Brewer. Two Oilers get tied up there. Rafi Torres ran into York, a shot by Coughlin. Coughlin has to make the save. The puck is really hopping now all over the ice. The players again are going to have to be careful here for the next 11 minutes. Hipsky starting back. And it's chopped off his stick following up Brewer. Knocked by Brewer. And out at center. And you can definitely see that puck on in. And that's going to make the job tougher for the Oilers. Playing catch up. Hipsky in. And he's checked on the play. Kept in by Edmonton. York in deep with Torres. Hipsky after it against Brisebois. Puck comes in front, and the Canadians are able to clear it. Yannick Perot, the two goal scorer tonight. Mark Andre Bergeron. Over to Ferguson. Sends it back to the Canadians' ice. Bouillon. Chased by Pesetti. Neatly ahead and across to Beijing. Over the line, Steve Bejan, the former Calgary Flame. With a sharp angle backhand that misses the target. Kept in by Bouillon. Over on the far side, Sundstrom couldn't reach it. It's Rive with a shot out in front of the net. And the Oilers bounce it to center. Past the 10-minute mark of this third period. Yannick Perot, the difference with a pair of goals and a 3-1 Canadiens lead. Ryan Smith heads up ice. Tries to center off Theodore. Boivu on the far side. Checked by Morrow. He'll reverse the puck. Jason Smith pinching in. Keeps it deep. Ryan Smith after it. Boivu knocked it away. Zetnik tries to clear. And now plays it to the Canadiens' captain. He's got Ryder loose. And it's broken up as the Canadiens had a two-on-one break. Because of a bad change by the Edmonton Oilers trying to get off. 
Now Smith along the boards. Took it away from Koivu. Dvorak heads up ice. Here's Radek Dvorak. Jason Smith with the shot. Loved down by Jose Theodore with 9.05 remaining in the third. Now, Colonel McLean would introduce some super guys. Well, Major Chris Holtz here, and I'd like to know who's the point man? Who's at the front of the formation today on that fantastic flyby? Oh, it's the boss, the commanding officer of the Snowbirds, Major Steve Will, who's uh, in the crowd with us here tonight. Well, you were great. Uh, as big events go, what's, uh, what's this one rank? Oh, it's right up there. Uh, we uh, we got to participate in the Great Cup last weekend in Regina, and it's uh, it's a huge pleasure to be here and uh, and be able to celebrate this uh, with everybody here in Edmonton. I was going to get you to show of hands. Who's the hockey guys? I'll give you the count while we're looking at the action. How many hockey guys? Raise your hands. Right. Everyone. Five, five of the six. <laughs> we're working on the one. He was What's on the end of the formation. Yeah. I talk to <laughs> He's like me. He's an honorary colonel. All right. Key, key moments here in the game. Two goal deficit. Thanks to Canada Snowbirds. Brilliant as always. Chris. Thank you very much. And thanks, Ron. And I know those guys shook up my uh, football partner, Chris Walby, last year at Commonwealth Stadium because uh, they make quite an impression, quite an entrance with those flybys. I was outside trying to get into the building, so I got to witness it from a spectator standpoint. It was very impressive. Very impressive. Less than nine minutes remaining in the Heritage Classic of the Canadians with that two goal lead. Surprised they let you in the building. <laughs> Did the press pass go on? Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, that's good. Signed Greg Villain, <laughs> autographed hockey cards, everything to get in. Oh, that'll really drop awesome. Chris Cuthbert's name. That'll do it. It's about it, though, huh? Play by play, guys. You know? It's just like Bruce Dobigan. Oh, yeah, I know him now. Yeah. Here's his pister as the Oilers try to. Answer back, and Dvorak with a chance, and just shot wide. On the far side, Brewer. And it's broken up by the Canadians. And rolled down in the Edmonton zone. Eight minutes to go. Most of the 57,000 have remained, getting anxious. Steos will start the play. Now Mike York speeds through center. Slowed up by Perot, and he'll get it back out. And that is a great look at the Montreal trap. All in the neutral zone, all facing the puck. No chance to speed through the neutral zone. York hammered by Perot in the corner. Oilers with possession. Now York's got it again. He tries to center it. And the Canadians recover the puck, and Bejan sends away Yannick Perot. Over on the far side, Perot in front by the tip as he was looking for the hat trick. Yannick Perot in front and just failed to convert for his third of the night. Jason Chavera knocked down. Then in turn, the Rock took his man down. And they'll do a little fencing. Oh, those face washes have to feel really good, don't they? <laughs> when you're that cold, you want to get a guy, just give him a little face wash. Well, good for the Canadians for coming in there and defending their teammate. Georgia Rock is more than a handful. Four against one might be enough. They Rock. call team toughness, they call it. The strength of five, much better than the strength of one, and in they come. Watch this. Keep an eye on the puck here. Whoop. Have a pretty wide hockey stick to corral up, like a goal stick. Maybe it'd work. This was I. This is what I like there. Look at this little. Oh well, we didn't carry it on for, far enough. But a little toe drag there, and you start to see the offensive imagination that Ribeiro has. Sees the ice really well. Players love to play with him. These two gonna go? Yeah, they're heat, they're heated up, and their gloves are off. They have time here to take the mittens off over the penalty box if they'd like to. They'll have enough time maybe to cool down and cooler heads might prevail before this is over, I would think. Chirping continues you, and... You take the toque off as well as the helmet too? I don't know. For hockey. And a shot by Stales. Lose bucket with the score! Jared Stoll has the goal! And it's a one goal game. Montreal is much better off playing five on five. 
Four on four hockey, too much speed, too much room, and an off of a faceoff. The Oilers now have outscored their opponents five to one on four on four hockey. They're quick, they're speedy, they get puck recovery here, and good work by Stoll to go to the net after setting the puck back to the point. And you can tell he gets bungled up with his goaltender there. Almost knocks him out of the play. Theodore looks at the referee like, I've been hit by a player. Well, the player's wearing red. I'm sorry, no call. Yeah, but I mean, you gotta go for the player coming out of the corner. You can't sit there and watch the puck, particularly the way it's bouncing. We just witnessed how the puck is bouncing all over the ice. That is a sore point with the Montreal Canadiens, soft in front of their net. Well, again, the Saskatchewan kid used to playing outside as his fourth goal in seven games. Fourth of the year, Steos the assist. 13.06. The time of the goal here in the third period that draws Edmonton within one. Why not a little OT? That'd be fun tonight. There was some talk that they would suspend the game at the end of 60 minutes, but if you're going to spend three hours out here, what's another five? That's not going to happen, no. Juno with a long shoot in right on Conklin. Again, the Oilers have a four game winning streak on the line here. And the Canadians, their last four visits to Edmonton have been losses, so they're trying to snap that skid and go home with five points on the five-game trip. But here's a break, Zednik in, Zednik scores! Richard Zednik beats Coughlin, and they lead by two again. Great move by Zednik. Most players on a breakaway will pull the puck and go to their backhand. Zednik the exact opposite. Fakes the shot, freezes the goalie, and Conklin gets caught flat-footed. Typically that happens in turnovers. He's too deep in his net, ends up on his tummy. And Brewer gets caught in no man's land as well. He's not up on the play or he's not back. There's Brewer that starts it out. Now here he is right here. Let's see where he gets. He got to get up the play, get up the play, and then he went for the bouncy puck. He arrived, arrived late, and there's that great move he's talking about. Right? So two goals in a minute 12. Zednik has his second of the game. His second two-goal game in the last three for Montreal. And the Canadians are goal starved, and that's a good sign as they have Richard Zednik scoring again. His sixth of the year from Sheldon Surrey. And it's 4-2 Montreal. Smith, as he does so well, goes to the net. And boy, that'll be a controversial play if the Edmonton Oilers tie this game up, as he didn't try to get out of the way either. And you see the look he gives Dan Morelli as if to say, come on, how am I supposed to play goal with this happening? But Theodore's outside the blue paint. I thought maybe his toque went over his eyes for a moment there. <laughs> and so we could be in for quite a finish. With less than five minutes to go, it's an unassisted goal by Steos, the top Oilers defenseman last year. Third goal of the season for number 24. Third point of the game, a goal and two assists. And I believe that's point number 100 in his NHL career. Surrey off the boards. And the fans here exhorting the Oilers on to a, an equalizer and a dramatic finish. Bounced in again. York's after it first. Rebay in the corner as well. 
point number 100 for Steve Steos in the NHL has made this a one goal game. Is Fister's got it. He plays it on the near side. Bergeron has moved right up as the Oilers press the attack. It's York and it is coming out in front. And cruising through the crease with Vasani. And finally, the Canadians get it out. Now Ferguson, both teams make changes. Ferguson holds and feeds ahead. Hemsky can't hook up with York, takes it himself. Squeezed out by Pouillon, but tries to stay on it. York still out. He's had an extended shift. Hemsky lost it. Smith follows up. Ryan Smith back in. Here's York, takes a look. Tries to cycle it. Hemsky, a shot towards the net. Off a skate, Canadians clear. We're back, not enough for icing. Play continues, and Bergeron has the puck. Cross ice pass, whoa, that was dangerous, but it pounced over Zednik's stick. Here come the Oilers now, and Stoll unable to get loose. Boy, if that pass was at Rexall Place, Zednik is walking in looking for his hat trick. Bounced just at the key time, getting it over his stick. No one complaining about the bad uh, ice there on that play. None of you are an Edmonton fan. Now marked off. Canadians work it ahead. Knocked down by Morrow. And they'll try it again. This time the left wing is open and Bejan just scoops it into the Oilers zone. Hoffman sets it up. Bejan ran into Smith who dispatches the puck to center. Time starting to be a factor against the Oilers. A lead pass knocked down. Jason Smith has to go back to retrieve the puck. Flipped it to the line, held in by Juno. And that puck deposited in the corner once again. Oilers can't bust out. Now they do, and York looks left side. And the pass is offside intended for Ethan Morrow. 149 left on the clock, and the goal by Steo certainly energized the Commonwealth crowd. Edmonton in the puck out of play. Not everybody stayed, but a large proportion of the fans, 57,000 plus for the start, and they're making noise right now. But Beijing comes back, and that backhand stopped by Conklin. Edmonton Oilers here have to get the puck down into Montreal zone, get a whistle, and try to get a timeout, get their goal, they'll regroup a bit here. Anytime they've been able to get the puck behind Montreal's goal line, they've had some success on the cycle, and that's how they're gonna score, I think, here, if they're gonna get. Watch Edmonton's defense jumping in the play, too. Be a big factor. Players like Bergeron. Rive rolls it in behind the net. Now after it is Sundstrom, he comes up with it. Beats the point. Here's Rive's shot. Conklin knocked it down. Puck is loose. And the Oilers were able to clear it out. They gotta get Ryan Smith on the ice here in a hurry. And he'll come to the goalie, I would think. Canadians with a change. That gives Dale's room to move it out. And here they come, on the line, final minute. Shot ends up in the corner. Coughlin has gone to the bench for an extra attacker. Jason Smith can't thread the needle. It goes behind the net. Dvorak battles for it there. Ryan Smith is there. Juno up for the Canadians. They roll it to the line and out. And Bola squeezed off the puck. Ryan Smith comes back to get it. He winds up. Plays it to the left side. Hemsky there against Breezebois. Hemsky trying to ward off Breezebois. 
Puck up the board. Jason Smith knocked it down. Throws it in front. York just missed. Mike York with a chance with 20 seconds to go. Nipsky tries it loose. And the puck bounces past the point man and out. And the Oilers are running out of time. Here's a giveaway. Play has been stopped. 5.5 seconds left on the clock. And an offside call. Mike York got the chance the Oilers were looking for. Montreal desperate for a change. These players have been out for a minute and 20. They didn't get the change they were looking for, and they got lazy in front of the net. And again, that puck rolls up at the last second on York, and he just doesn't get much on it. And it's the same for both teams. But a break for the Montreal Canadiens, and let's not forget the Oilers had a break a few moments ago. Absolutely, the puck bouncing over Zednik's Zednik stick. Zednik yep. was gone. Let's have a look at the puck here. Keep an eye on the biscuit. I'll tell you one thing Julian will do in this last 7.5 seconds. He'll have two centermen on. He didn't against Calgary the other night. Koivu took the face off. It was lost, and it cost them the game. He'll have two centermen out for sure. 7.5 seconds left. I think Patrice Brisebois might have got a bit of that puck on the shot from York. You could see on that last yeah. angle, too, there was a little space in the top corner. Well, that's that extra confidence that he has. Support of the management. We're not trading. We don't like him. People in Montreal don't come to the games. Basically, the way Bob Gainey put it, insulating his players from pressure. Oilers called the timeout. They added two seconds to the clock. It had run down to 5.5, but from the scrum, a shot wide, but the Montreal Canadiens are going to beat the cold and the Oilers to win the Heritage Classic here at Commonwealth Stadium. Well, I tell you, both these teams give them a pat on the back, a lot of courage to play in these elements. I'm sure it would have been easy to say, no, but we'd rather play somewhere else, somewhere indoors where it's 35 degrees warmer. But they battled through it and gave these fans a great hockey game. The temperatures exceeded what we thought might be the cutoff here tonight, but the players played through it. Ty Conklin and Jose Theodore braving the elements, and uh, it was certainly worthy of a game that uh, wanted to bring back the grassroots. Well, I've been very honored to be a part of this, guys. I'm sure you feel the same way because this has been a tremendous success, without question. And you can see the smile, obviously, in the Montreal Canadiens' face with their two points. Not so much, perhaps, for the Edmonton Oilers. But give the Oilers a few days to think about this, and I'm sure each player will say that was a pretty neat experience. Good job, big two points. Big two points, that's it. Good job. Good job, guys. I think the, the one thing we probably have to say about this game tonight is probably the fact that the what we said before the game has come true. We've found a way to win, and now we can talk about this game for a long time and, and talk about it in a real positive way. So that's probably the most important thing. Obviously, two points is huge for us, but uh, I think we got an opportunity to enjoy ourselves tonight, enjoy the win, and uh, make sure we're on the bus tomorrow morning here. We've got a big tilt against Vancouver on, the, on Tuesday, so uh, let's make sure we, uh, we're smart about what we do here tonight. But enjoy it, guys. Uh, what an experience, eh? It's unreal. I mean. Uh, for, for what it's worth, I don't know how you guys felt, but just standing there beginning of the game, uh, it was a really good feeling and made it all worthwhile. And it's two points here, guys, just uh, icing on the, or a cherry on the, on the cake. So uh, good job. And uh, let's make sure we take care of ourselves and let's continue winning hockey. It's your last one.
CBC's Hockey Night in Canada gear is available online at cbcshop.ca or at a store near you. Browse through the latest men's and women's sweaters, tees, jerseys, hats, sticks, pucks, and more, and be sure to check out this season's best-selling book, The Best of Hockey Night in Canada.